All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, O Prophet, don't think of those who have been killed in Allah's way as dead. They are alive with their Lord, well provided for, happy with what Allah has given them of his favor, rejoicing that for those who have left behind, who have yet to join them, there is no fear, nor will they grieve. Rejoicing in Allah's blessing and favor, and that Allah will not let the reward of the believers be lost. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. The Almighty Allah has created man to develop the earth. Allah, glory be to him, has endowed man with all that helps him to perform this duty. The Almighty Allah made the human soul inviolable, so that any attack or transgression against one human soul is like attacking all souls. Likewise, any reformation or preservation of one human soul is like the preservation of all souls. The Almighty Allah said, if anyone kills a person unless in retribution for murder or spreading corruption in the land, it is as if he kills all mankind, while if any saves a life, it is as if he saves the lives of all humankind. The development of land is a lofty goal that cannot be achieved except through multiple efforts and sacrifices from faithful people who sacrifice their, th their souls for the sake of their religion and homeland because they realize the value of their nation and the importance of secure life. Such people hold a deal with their Lord and it is a deal that will be fruitful as Allah said. Allah has purchased from the persons and Allah has purchased, purchased the persons and possessions of the believers in return for the garden. They fight in Allah's way, they kill and are killed. This is a true promise given by him in the Torah, the Gospel and the Quran. Who could be more faithful to his promise than Allah? So be happy with the bargain you have made. That's the supreme triumph. Their reward is similar to their action. They they wanted to save the lives of others, and Allah rewards them by granting them an eternal life. Allah says, Do not say that those who are killed in Allah's cause are dead. They are alive, though you do not realize it. Martyrdom for the sake of Allah is one of the best ranks and one of the highest goals that can only be achieved for the best among humans. As the Almighty Allah said, Allah chooses murders from among you. It is a gift from Allah for the best persons whom he loves second to prophets and messengers. Allah says, Whoever obeys Allah and the messenger will be among those he has blessed. The messengers, the truthful, those who bear witness to the truth and the righteous. What an excellent companions these are. Allah saves such persons from the trouble of the grave and the punishment on the day of judgment. Once one of the companions of the Prophet said, <clears throat> O Messenger of Allah, why will the believers be tested in their graves except the martyrs? The Prophet, peace be upon him, replied, The flashing of swords above their heads is an enough trial. Moreover, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked Jibreel about the saying of Allah, the trumps will be sounded, and everyone in the heavens and earth will, will fall down senseless, except those whom Allah spares. Gabriel answered, Those are the murders of Allah. It is a great merit for murders that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. The actions of every dead person will come to a halt with his death, except the one who is on the frontier in Allah's way that is, fighting for the cause of Allah. The latter's deed will be made to go on increasing for him till the day of resurrection. 
Whoever is blessed with martyrdom and experiences its blessings, he would wish that we, he would come back to life to attain martyrdom again and again. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, No one who has entered paradise will desire to, to return to this world, even if he should be given all that the world contains except a martyr. For he will yearn that he should return to the world and be killed ten times on account of the dignity that he will experience by virtue of his martyrdom. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, By him in whose hands my life is, I'd love to be murdered in Allah's cause, and then get resurrected, and then get murdered, and then get resurrected again, and then get murdered, and then get resurrected again, and then get murdered. This was why the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, were so keen to attain martyrdom. This is companion, Amr ibn al-Jamuh, the lame companion who wished to go out on the battle of Badr. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, refused that a lame, a lame person participates in the fighting. When the battle of Ahad occurred, he insisted to go out, saying to his sons, You have prevented me from paradise in the battle of Badr, and you need to prevent me now again. He went to the Prophet, asking him, Shall the one who will attain martyrdom on that day enter paradise? The Prophet replied, Yes, he said, By Allah, I shall not return back to my family until I enter paradise. Umar ibn Khattab said, Do not swear, do not swear that. The Prophet commented, Leave him. There are some people who it were to swear by Allah that something would happen. Allah will certainly make it happen. One of them is Amr ibn al-Jamuh. He will enter paradise with his lameness. As Islam is the religion of chivalry, courage, chastity, and the preservation of souls, honor, property, and rights, it may the preservation of all this a part of faith. Islam makes defending all these values and rights one of the highest goals, and whoever dies to achieve this is a martyr. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, he who dies while defending his property is a murderer. He who dies in def defense of his life is a murderer. And he who dies on defense of his faith is a murderer. And he who dies in defense of his family is a murderer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, The one who is killed is a murderer. One who dies under the debris of a construction, for example, is a murderer. One who dies of a disease in his belly is a martyr. The drowned is a martyr. And the one who is devoured by a beast is a martyr. The one who dies while fighting in the way of Allah is a martyr. The one who mentions the name of Allah before sleeping and dies during a sleep is a martyr. A woman who dies after birth is a martyr. The one who dies at home while wishing to make the, wor the word of Allah superior is a martyr. The one who faithfully asks Allah to attain martyrdom is considered a martyr. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who supplicates Allah sincerely for martyrdom, Allah will elevate him to the status of the martyrs, even if he dies on his bed. <clears throat> the true martyr is the one who abides by the truth, is loyal to it, and sacrifices himself for the sake of it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the one who fights for Allah's word to become superior is striving in Allah's cause. The martyr is honorable in that world and the hereafter. And in the world, his name is raised, recorded in the memory of the nation and as an example of sacrifice, courage, and honor. Throughout generations, our murders will remain alive in our minds and hearts. In the hereafter, they will be resurrected in all pride, beauty, and honor. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, by him in whose hands my soul is, whoever is wounded in Allah's cause, and Allah knows well who gets wounded in his, cool, in his cause, will come on the day of resurrection with his wound having the color of blood but the scent of musk. Our purified martyrs have sacrificed their souls for the sake of others. 
leaving behind families and children. So these families and children have rights and duties upon us. The list of these rights and duties includes honoring them and admitting the gratitude of their fathers. Allah Most High says, is the reward for good, for good anything but good? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, he who does not thank the people is not thankful to Allah, and anyone who does not does a favor should repay it. If you do not find anything, then make supplication for the door of the favor, so that he knows that you have repaid him. It goes without th without saying that there is no comp compensation equivalent to the sacrifice made by our martyrs. We should also be keen on alleviating the bitterness of losing fathers, a matter which is realized by continuously meeting their needs, spending time with them, and kindly dealing with them. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to care about the martyrs' family. families. For example, he, peace be upon him, showed great care for the family of Jafar ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, who was murders in, murdered in the Battle of Mu'ta and left behind little children. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praises due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that our Master Prophet Muhammad is his father and messenger. Muslim brothers, our duties towards family, martyrs' families include that we should provide safe and stable life for them because their fathers died so that we could safely live. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, secured the reward for him who cares about the families of murderers, saying, he who prepares a fighter going in Allah's cause is given a reward equal to that of a fighter. And he who looks after the dependence of a fighter going in Allah's cause is given a reward equal to that of a, of a fighter. <clears throat> in truth, Looking after the needs of those families is a sign of gratitude and fulfillment for some of their rights upon us. In this regard, Imam al-Bukhari narrated on the authority of Zayd ibn Aslam, who narrated on the authority of his father, who said, Once I went with Omar ibn al-Khattab to the market. A young woman followed Omar and said, O oh, chief of believers, my, ha my husband has died leaving little children. By Allah, they have not even a sheep's father to cook. They have no farms or animals. I am afraid that they may die because of hunger. And I am the daughter of Khufaf ibn Ima al-Ghifari. And my father witnessed the pledge of allegiance of al hudaybiyah with the Prophet, peace be upon him. Omar stopped and did not proceed and said, I welcome my near relative. Then he went towards a strong camel which was tied in the house and, lo and loaded on it two sacks he had filled with fruit grains and put between them money and clothes and gave her its rope to hold and said, lead it. And this provision will not finish till Allah gives you a good supply. A man said, O oh, chief of, of the believers, you have given her too much. Omar said this approvingly. May, you, may your mother be bereaved of you. By Allah, I have seen her father and brother besieging a fort for a long time and conquering it. And then we were discussing what their shares would be from the war booty. This incident clearly tells us how we should deal with the murderer's families, <coughs> as clearly indicated from the action of Omar. These duties also include that we should qualify our children, their children, and give them the due status they deserve, a matter which is deduced from the action of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who used to look after the murderer's families and highly qualify their children. In this connection, we give glad tidings to the martyrs' families and sons that Allah Most High protects them and looks after them. For Allah the Almighty is an ally to the righteous. That's to say that the righteousness of parents will surely benefit their children in both this life and the life to come. 
In this regard, Allah Most High has used two righteous servants, that's Prophet Moses and Al Khidr, to protect the money of two orphan boys of their parents' righteousness. We should perfectly know that the sacrifice of our murders is the best of deeds to be offered to this country. It is thus a debt on all faithful Egyptians to be sincere soldiers to our country, each in his field of specialization. We should, we should exert our utmost to serve this great country. We should unite together to, to support our army, police, and all the national institutions, stressing meanwhile that our national institutions are what keeps the society safe and stable. So we should combat extremism and terrorist groups that want terror and chaos to prevail in our country, as they don't believe in the country or its interest. In truth, such groups are of a great danger to the religion and the state which is why combating them is a religious, national, and a human duty. I ask Allah Most High to shower our purified murders in His infinite mercy and to protect our country, army, police forces from all evil and harm.